And Kim, if you could stop sharing your screen, we'll go ahead and get started. Today, you officially become a Buckeye. This is the beginning of your Ohio State journey. You might be asking, what does it mean to be a Buckeye? Being a Buckeye means endless possibilities. During your time at The Ohio State University, you could be a leader, a researcher, an explorer, and much more. Go far! It's only up to your imagination how much you can accomplish while you're with us. Get involved in a student organization, do undergraduate research, participate in an education abroad trip, volunteer in the community, and see some of the awe-inspiring sites in Lincoln County. Be great. Whether you only begin or fully complete your Ohio State journey at Ohio State Newark, faculty, staff, and your peers are here to support, encourage, and inspire you to succeed both academically and personally, just as you should do for them. You are now a part of a 150-year-old tradition full of spirit and pride whose members constantly lead the way. Buckeyes do groundbreaking research, manage successful businesses, and improve communities all over the globe. And that is just what Ohio State students are doing. Being a Buckeye means being part of a global community. Make connections. Ohio State University works diligently to create an atmosphere that is inclusive, welcoming, and diverse. Ohio State University in Newark, it's very proud to be the most diverse campus of Ohio State. Faculty, staff, and your peers come from many different backgrounds and walks of life, so get to know them. Ohio State's influence reaches far and wide across the globe. Faculty are world-renowned, highly sought-after experts that are here to help you get the best educational experience you can. Our university boasts a global alumni network of over 500,000 who are invaluable resources for you. Welcome to Ohio State Newark. We're glad you're here. Well, Buckeyes, that's a great place to start. My name is Diane Canny, and I'm the Director of Enrollment. You probably, I probably look pretty familiar to a lot of you if you attended a Buckeye Visit Day or another event, a recruiting event. We could not be happier, as you can tell by our excitement, uh, that you are joining us not only for Convocation 2020, but as a member of the class of 2024 at The Ohio State University at Newark. So a couple quick housekeeping things that I'd like to share with you before we get started. Um, this is best viewed in full screen. That will take any uh, of us on screen and on live uh, video off the screen for you. So you can view most videos or live uh, speakers in full screen. We have a combination tonight of both uh, pre-recorded segments and two live speakers. You will hear from Dr. Uh, William McDonald coming up here shortly. You'll hear from our Director of Student Life, Holly Mason, and you'll hear from faculty member, Dr. Lerner. And uh, certainly you wanna put Dr. Lerner's classes on your schedule in the future if you haven't already. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. William L. McDonald, who is our Dean Director of The Ohio State University at Newark. Bill? Thank you, Diane. Students, welcome to The Ohio State University and to the Newark campus. At Convocation, members of the campus community come together virtually this year to welcome you and to celebrate the start of the academic year. It's especially appropriate at a gathering such as this, even if virtual, to recognize that the land on which our campus resides has long served as a site of meeting and exchange for indigenous peoples, including those in historical times known as the Shawnee, Miami, 
Wyandotte, Delaware, and the people of the fort's ancient Hopewell and Adena cultures, also known as the Earthworks Builders, and other tribal nations of the region. We honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this land on which we gather. As we connect with each other today to celebrate the start of the academic year, we are also celebrating Ohio State's sesquicentennial. Over the past 150 years, Ohio State has developed many traditions that encompass all of its campuses. Those traditions help define the university's culture, but university's culture is always fluid. Activities emerge, gain popularity, and may become so established that it's hard to imagine they might someday disappear. Consider the phrase, O-H-I-O. Some gain popularity, but evolve. Just go look at old pictures of Brutus Buckeye. Others eventually disappear altogether. Consider what happens when a building is demolished. All traditions have a beginning, and the fluidity of Ohio State's culture means that a new tradition can emerge at any moment, and its potential to do so resides in you. Now, I want you to think about something. Believe it or not, all first-year students at this campus this fall represent about 50% of the campus's student population. The size of your subpopulation gives you great influence whether you are on campus or connecting with your classmates and instructors virtually, my advice to you is to own the culture. It belongs to you and it's yours to shape. Leave your mark. Every one of you contributes to the diversity of our student population, not only here at the Newark campus, but at Ohio State overall. The sea of diversity in which you are swimming will present amazing opportunities for you to learn from each other. You are going to form lifelong relationships that cross ethnic, racial, religious, gender, political, and all sorts of other cultural categories. We are all different from one another, but we are all part of one Ohio State family. And that's a big family with six campuses, extension offices throughout the state, and gateway sites in Brazil, China, and India, and alumni all around the world. Ohio State is magnificently massive. Our vastness attracts and accommodates an incredibly diverse student population. You, for example, represent over 60 of Ohio's 88 counties. And some of you were born outside the United States or have parents who immigrated to the United States. So how do you leave your mark in such a huge family? And how do you do so in such a strange time? It's no secret that you've been dealt a blow. The pandemic has created enormous challenges for all of us. You can start though, by getting to know your family. It's a friendly family. Try these things, some of which you can do virtually, some of which you can do in person. Seek out student organizations. Contact Dr. Virginia Cope about STEP, the second year transformational experience program, and about our Lefevre Fellows program. Consider ROTC. You can participate in Army ROTC here at the Newark campus. Visit the Newark Earthworks and get involved in the Newark Earthworks Center. Explore research opportunities by visiting with faculty members via Zoom or Skype. Audition for a role in a play. Our Black Box Theater is doing virtual Macbeth this fall. When the pandemic has subsided, consider doing these things. Explore education abroad. Take a summer course at Stone Lab. Scholarships are available. Visit the works and ask about getting involved there. You must visit the Cydome. Pelotonia, join the campus Peloton and help Ohio State end cancer. Participate in university chorus. Don't sit by and watch. Join in, take the lead. Ohio State offers you enormous opportunities to grow, but you have to engage the ignition. Your moment at Ohio State has begun. You are on an incredible journey. And I hope that when you reach your destination, when you receive your diploma, you will look back at your seasons at Ohio State with tremendous pleasure. And in light of the present circumstances, the confidence that you are ready for life's biggest challenges. Will it be you to contribute to the screenplay for a blockbuster movie, to create policy changes that help companies adopt socially responsible business practices, to design a process for enhancing the safety of manufacturing, to write a book that enhances our understanding of humanity, to do a psychological study that gives us insight into human behavior, to advance us toward a cure for cancer, to improve people's lives through innovative social work, or to be a political activist who makes a difference in the movement to dismantle structural racism? For that last possibility, you have numerous role models, some of whom, such as the late John Lewis, are contemporaries. 
Others are historical figures, such as Harriet Tubman, whose likeness, I am pleased to let you know, will soon join those of the other great contributors who are memorialized in the Newark campus's statuary. Ohio State produces great contributors who champion human potential. Harriet Tubman was such a champion, and I hope you draw inspiration from her to change the world. All of us are wel who are welcoming you today are here to help you. It's time to get started. I wish you a great year. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce our convocation speaker, Dr. Mitchell Lerner, Professor of History and Director of Ohio State's East Asian Studies Center. A specialist in modern American diplomatic and political history, Mitch has published prolifically. His first book, The Pueblo Incident, A Spy Ship and the Failure of American Foreign Policy, was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. He has performed all sorts of service to the campus and community. Several years ago, he organized debates for mayoral elections in Newark. He is also a recipient of Ohio State's Alumni Award for Distinguished Teaching. He is a fantastic professor, and I am excited that he agreed to speak to you today. Take it away, Mitch. Hello, everyone. And on behalf of the faculty and everyone else here at OSU Newark, let me just offer you my most enthusiastic welcome to Buckeye Nation. And believe me, this isn't the way I wanted to do it. In fact, I desperately wish that we were all on campus right now so I could welcome you in person. In fact, frankly, I wish I could be anywhere to welcome anyone in person. Right now, if I was offered a chance to come meet a group of new students but was told I'd have to travel to North Korea to do it, I'd start packing my bags pretty much immediately. Unfortunately, Current circumstances of our lives have me pretty much confined to my living room, but that it hasn't crushed my enthusiasm for the next academic year, and I hope it hasn't crushed yours either. Now, I mentioned that I'm in my living room, but you can see in my background around me that I'm also somewhere else. Pictured behind me are the Cliffs of Moher in County Clare, Ireland. It's one of my favorite places in the world, and I've been there a lot because roughly 15 years ago, I was the Mary Ball Washington Distinguished Fulbright Professor of American History at University College Dublin in Ireland. The Mary Ball Washington Chair in Dublin is awarded just one American professor every year, and it's one of the most prestigious positions in my profession. And I tell you this not to brag, but so that you understand that OSU Newark isn't just a place to come and kill time for a year or two before moving on to your next destination. It's a place where you can work with some top people in your desired field and, and get involved with some exciting research and take some really important steps towards whatever destination you want to reach in the end. So we have, for example, an astronomy professor who works with NASA's Space Flight, Space Flight Center and is the founding director of the Dome Planetarium at the works right down the road in Newark. We have a geology professor who travels to India to study the impact of climate change on local communities. We've got an education professor who's one of I think only six professors in the country who's credentialed to train teachers on how to implement dyslexia intervention for whole classroom teaching. And we have a math professor who's part of a small group of scholars across the country who are developing a new form of algebra that crosses into infinite dimensions. Um, and yes, I have absolutely no idea what that actually means, but apparently it's kind of a big deal. So I would just urge you to think of your time here as more than just a, a basic first step. It's more than a simple introduction to the next phase of your lives. And instead to really embrace it as the great opportunity that it is. And what you end up doing here obviously is up to you. But I hope that you'll take advantage of the opportunities that you have. And I promise you that the faculty here will be enthusiastic about being part of that process in helping you along. You know, when the Dean asked me to give this brief welcome talk about a month ago, I started thinking about a time roughly 20 years ago, not long after I had come to the Newark campus, when I gave another talk on behalf of the faculty at a similar event on campus. This was the annual um, end of the year event that we always host for students who had won some sort of special recognition or an award for some specific academic accomplishment from the previous year. It's an event, by the way, that I expect we will still have when life goes back to normal and I fully expect to see many of you invited to attend in the next few years. Anyway, just for fun, I went back uh, just a couple days ago to see if I still had a copy of my notes from that talk, and I was shocked to find out that I still had them. And I was even more shocked to see, as I read through them, 
how much the world had changed since then. You see, that night, almost 20 years ago, I had basically urged the students to recognize that their generation was inheriting a world without any really serious challenges or difficulties. I, I'm a historian. So that means not only am I long-winded and boring, but that I like to put everything in this grand sweeping scope of history. And so in that earlier speech from almost 20 years ago, I talked about how the students, um, you know, th their great, great grandparents had turned this country into an industrial powerhouse. And then how their great grandparents had fought to shape and reorganize that emerging political and economic system so that it worked more efficiently and it worked more fairly for everyone. And then how their grandparents had probably survived the Great Depression and helped win World War II. And how their parents had probably fought for civil rights or women's rights or, or, or some other capacity to expand the notion of equality. And they helped to win the Cold War. And now here they were, this student, this group of students 20 years ago, and I told them they're inheriting a world of stability and prosperity with the United States as the unchallenged leader, um, a, a world that just offered incredible promise and incredible opportunity to our students. And now as I, as I look around the world today, um, I, I can say that, yeah, uh, I got that one wrong. And that's no surprise. We historians are notably bad at predicting the future. Uh, I pretty much predict that the Browns are going to make the playoffs every year, you, and you can see how well I've done on that one. But the idea that I delivered to the students 15, 18 years ago at that ceremony, that the U.S. Had, had somehow reached its apex, that we had almost perfected the system, and that the future was bright, it was so full of reasons for optimism and good cheer, um, that one pretty much missed the mark just as badly. Your generation will not be graduating into a nation of rainbows and unicorns and puppy dogs and Cleveland Browns playoff victories. Instead, it'll probably inherit a nation with some pretty serious economic problems, serious internal political divisions, potentially devastating environmental and global health challenges and, and serious international threats throughout the world. The times have changed, but the larger points that I made to those students that evening, almost two decades ago, still stand, I think. I told the students that night that the future belonged to them, but that they needed to take ownership of it, that they needed to make it happen. I told them that it didn't matter what they did specifically, as long as they did it to the absolute best of their ability and with an eye towards contributing to the society around them in whatever fashion worked best for them. And most importantly, I told them that the nation needed a new generation to inspire and to lead and where necessary to implement change. And I would say the same thing to you tonight. And I would hope that your stay here at OSU Newark launches you in that direction to inspire and to lead and even to change when necessary. Now you can go in any direction you want and OSU Newark presents all sorts of avenues. You can aspire to work for NASA or to study climate change in India or to teach students with disabilities or work on multi-dimensional algebra that no one really understands. Or you can even be a boring and, and long-winded historian of modern America, or you can do something else entirely. But on behalf of all of my faculty colleagues here at the Newark campus, I hope that you will let us be part of that process of helping you to get there. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for choosing us as your next destination. And welcome to Buckeye Nation. Hello again, students. This is Diane Candy again, Director of Enrollment. It is now my pleasure to introduce um, Sorry, I had to think about it for a minute. Uh, Sage Anderson, who is one of our students, and he's going to give us all a little history lesson on Carmen, Ohio. If you don't know much about Carmen, Ohio, tune in because you're going to learn a lot. In the early days of the game between Ohio State and the other team of favor, the Buckeyes, 
Their meeting in 1902 was particularly painful, with that other team prevailing by a humiliating score of 86 to zero. However, there may have been a silver lining to this devastating loss. As the story goes, Fred Cornell, a freshman at Ohio State, a def backup defensive end for the football team and a member of the Ohio State Glee Club poured his heart into the lyrics of Carmen, Ohio on a train ride back to Columbus after this devastating loss. On the back of an envelope, Cornell scribbled lyrics of affection for Ohio State. Lyrics to a song that would become an Ohio State tradition that has endured for more than a century. Today, this tradition holds a special meaning as you are together with your classmates for the first time, signifying the bookends of your academic career. Carmen, Ohio is sung on both your first day of class and will sound one final time on your graduation day, your final day as a student. I hope you will join in as the chimes ring out for your first time as a student, our alma mater. Okay, students, it's time. Carmen, Ohio, for the first time with your classmates. So bear with me while I get to that video and we're gonna do it all together, all united as one here with uh, the global Carmen. If you've not seen this, not only join in, but definitely, definitely let's hear the sound around Central Ohio. and I serve as your Director of Student Life here on the Newark campus. As many before me have expressed, I would like to say welcome. I would also like to take a brief moment to acknowledge the hard work, particularly that of the Convocation Committee, that made today's program possible. Although we are joined together in a different format, it is important to still honor our traditions in a healthy and safe way until we can get together again face to face. Like Convocation, there are many traditions affiliated with being a Buckeye. As you've heard, like yelling OH and expecting a reply anytime, anywhere. And although we are beginning our college experience with you a little bit different than what we expected, our traditions can endure through much change and so can we. And although many traditions are steadfast and consistent, the truth is that traditions are not always final. Think about the Buckeye tree. Each autumn, the leaves change and transform into beautiful colors and then drop to the ground. But the tree itself remains steadfast, even though it looks different. Just like the Buckeye tree, 
you too can remain steadfast in your roots, but transform and grow. Perhaps in high school you were involved in a sport, but your schedule didn't allow you to explore your interest in music or student government or planning events. Or maybe you had to assist with your family's business and extracurricular activities were not things that you had time for. Now is your time to make a change, to engage in your campus community and actively participate in the opportunities that surround you. Traditions for the Newark campus began when, they, when our campus was established in 1957, and much planning, hard work, development, and dedication went into creating the campus that you see today. Today, as many have mentioned, you officially began as a Buckeye, and normally you would participate in our tradition, the Bridge Walk. Although this bridge is physically here in Newark, and you could see that behind Dr. McDonald and his welcome, rest assured that hundreds of thousands of Buckeyes before you have made a similar journey, crossing the bridge from high school or previous careers or life in the military, forging a path for you to be here today. Our bridge walk tradition involves being guided by faculty and staff down the path and then welcomed to cross the bridge. And although today we cannot physically be in that location, there is absolutely a community still here to guide you. Notice I said we will guide you. We won't carry you, pull you, or do it for you. This is your journey. We are here with you. The support and guidance is available for you to succeed, but it's ultimately up to you. In closing, I would advise you to embrace the traditions of being a Buckeye, but don't stop there. Continue on your journey, engaging in new opportunities to become a better Buckeye. Help each other, be kind, and don't be afraid to start new traditions of your own. After all, every tr tradition has a beginning. So thank you for your participation today. Available next, please view the closing video. At The Ohio State University at Newark, your education in the classroom is just as important as experiencing life outside the classroom. At Ohio State Newark, the faculty members know your name, and you can find research opportunities in your first year. But you will also experience a city that's home to more than 50 Fortune 500 companies, where local history is world history, where live music and the arts live next door to awe-inspiring views and where fresh opportunities and one-of-a-kind flavors are just around the corner. There are so many paths at Ohio State, and you can find your own, like I did, at Ohio State Newark. Your time inside the classroom will help you go far, and your time outside the classroom will make you, you. Because where you end up has a lot to do with where you begin. So join me. It's time to start your own Buckeye journey and find out how far you can go at Ohio State Newark. Good luck students, this ends convocation.